Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Sprout. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I am having a great day, and today I would really like to get into some tech stuff. Uh, we've been doing a little bit of magic stuff, a little bit of exploration over the last couple episodes, and today I would like to get into some basic tech, uh, some ore doubling and maybe some of that kind of stuff. The first thing that we need to sort out is power generation. Now, over here... On the outskirts of the village, there's a water wheel, and it's a three, it's three wide. I don't know if this is actually hooked up. It is not. Okay, so this is all immersive engineering stuff. If you're not familiar with immersive engineering, it's an amazingly cool mod. One of my favorite mods, actually, uh, just because it's so well designed and beautiful it's just a, it's one of the coolest looking mods i think like in existence i actually love the the aesthetic of immersive engineering now what this means right there's a power generation within immersive engineering uh that involves these water wheels and then they hook into a kinetic dynamo so essentially because this thing is here we basically are like halfway to a power gen. Oh, and by the way, it's a passive power gen that doesn't require any fuel whatsoever, which makes it amazing. So I'm thinking, uh, oh, and we got a rolling machine over here. That's pretty good. Bunch of copper, bunch of, this is all railcraft stuff, I think. Uh, yeah, that appears to be. So let's take a look at the kinetic dynamo, right? And let's just see, that's one of these. We're gonna need iron ingots, a copper coil block, we should totally be able to make this. Like, we should already have all the resources we need. And there's a bunch of these crates as well. And yes, I know these crates have been here for some time. I've been ignoring them. I like the crates. They're okay. Uh, they, they basically work like shulker boxes. But the downside is you can't actually see what's inside of them uh, when they're in your inventory. So they work as shulker boxes, but uh, they're also not necessarily the best mobile storage thing because you have to place them down to get into them. And on top of that, uh, you can't actually, uh, like, see what's in them before you place them down. So if you have several of them on you at once, uh, it can be a little tedious trying to figure out where your stuff is. Uh, let's head into our house, and let's see if we can get uh, a kinetic dynamo going here. So I'm thinking, first of all, I need to check and see if I have the hammer. And it doesn't look like I do. Okay, that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, let's put some of this stuff in here. Let, let me just get organized. Let me get some stuff together, guys, and I'll be back with you in just a sec. Okay, guys, I am back. Inventory is all sorted. I opened up some of those bags that were in this chest, you know, like the loot bags. I got a builder's wand out of there, which is amazing. The builder's wand is a super awesome tool, I, I'm and I'm actually super glad to have it. But anyway... Let's get into immersive engineering. So the first thing I need to make is this guy, the engineer's hammer. Pretty easy to make, just a couple of iron ingots, a couple of sticks, and a piece of string. Uh, string, uh, why is string in there? It shouldn't be, but hey, whatever. Um, so we go one, two, put the string there, and bam, there we go. We have ourselves an engineer's hammer. Then I also need to make an engineer's wire cutters. Once again, super easy, couple of sticks, one iron ingot, and there we go. Okay, so we're off to a pretty good start. Now, I do probably want to smelt up some copper ore, I'm thinking, because we are going to need it. We'll let this kind of do its thing, do, 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 there we go, toss that in there. Okay. And we'll grab the copper ingots and these copper ingots. And now let's look back at that kinetic dynamo. So if we look at this, we needed to make a copper coil block. That's going to require eight of these low voltage wire coils. And we'll need four copper plates per thing, right? So that's going to be eight. We need 32 of these guys. Wow, that's actually going to take a little bit more than I thought. But what we'll do, basically, is make these into copper plates and those into copper plates. We need 12 more. 
Right? And then we'll take these. Yeah, and that only makes one. Oof. Okay. Hey, that's fine. So we'll go eight like so. Put you guys here. Oh, but those make four. Okay, so actually we're totally fine. Never mind. I, uh, I didn't notice that. Hey, that's good though. That's actually really good for us. Okay, so then... We'll surround that. That makes our copper coil. And then we just need two redstone and three iron. So one, two. One, two, three. And... There we go. We now have ourselves a kinetic dynamo. Uh, so that is the first step to the power generation. So now what we need is a couple of buckets, I think. We've got one here. Let's just make two more. Okay. And this thing is almost full, but for now I'm going to talk. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. We'll put this guy right here. That's going to be for all immersive engineering stuff. Because there's a lot of different things in immersive engineering. Lots of different components and all sorts of stuff like that. We'll just toss all that right in there. Call it good. And that'll make it easier to find as well. So I need my kinetic dynamo. And then we're also going to need some sort of conduit or cable. I'm kind of thinking to start with... Well, I can't really do the conductive iron yet, can I? Um, we'll probably have to go... with the basic cables here. So, low voltage wire connector, that means I need four hardened clay and three copper. So, let's go... I should have clay. Yeah, we'll do this. We'll go... One, two, three, four. And we'll just smelt those up. For now, we can probably take these out. Right? Toss that in there. Toss that in there. Get those going. Uh, toss the copper in there. You guys go here. And then we'll need four of these. And I'll need some uh, actual wire as well. I think I... Yeah, low voltage wire coil. Oh, dude. That's super easy to make. In fact, I actually already have a whole bunch of that. So this will be fine. Okay. So you got our hardened clay. We need three copper ingots. We go like so. And there we go. Now we have everything we need for a little bit of power generation. So the first actual machine I think I want to make is probably an alloy smelter. And I should be able to make that. So we just need a couple of these, and I think it was a copper ingot. Um, let's just double check. One copper, four gold nuggets. Okay. There we go. So we'll make one of those, and then I need three furnaces. That's easy. A bunch of iron stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're good. Okay. And as I said... One, two, three furnaces. Uh, we need... Do I have iron bars made? I was going to say, I feel like I've already made iron bars at some point. We need a cauldron. We'll do that. And there we go. We have ourselves an alloy smelter. Let's sleep. And now we should be able to set up an alloy smelter that actually runs on power and will cook stuff for us. Uh, relatively easily, so that's good. I'm thinking... Let's do this. Let's make, like, two chests, and I'm just gonna make them into regular chests, because I'm actually not really a fan of the quark chests for some reason. And let's just take the stuff with us here that we can actually smelt. Uh, so, silver, lead, that'll be aluminum, copper... The chaos we want to probably leave alone for the minute. But that seems all good. Okay. And you can stay behind, and you can stay behind. Okay, cool. Let's take this... Oh, wait. One thing I forgot. I need just some building blocks of some sort so I can pillar around and all that kind of good stuff. All right. So now we're going to set the dynamo up 
so that it's running off of this water wheel. That is our plan, okay? So I think the first thing we need to do is actually get up here and just temporarily, we're just gonna block this off and we'll go one, two, so we've got three buckets of water because I have three buckets in my other, uh, I have a bucket in my backpack as well, right? And we'll just do that. Okay, that'll turn off the, the water wheel. It'll just completely stop it, which is actually like perfectly fine. Uh, then we need to find the center point. It appears to be right here. So I think like right back. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And then we need to break these, like so. And then our dynamo needs to go, uh, we gotta break that out as well. Our dynamo needs to go right there. And then the rest of it, all we need to do is basically put the water wheel back or put the water wheels back, like so, okay. It's not going to be generating a whole lot of power right now. Can I stand on top of this? I totally can. Nice. And then we do that and we fill in that and we fill in that. Uh... And I need you. Okay. Like so. And then finally, here, here, and there. Why are those not flowing over? They should be flowing over. Um, let's do this. Let's go like this. Put you here. There we go. Now it's flowing over. And then we'll just tear those out. And that seems good. That seems like it should be working. Um, temporarily. I'm just gonna fill that back in with cobble. But yeah, that thing is definitely moving now. This is good. This is actually a great start. Okay, now this is beautiful, no doubt. It looks gorgeous. However, as beautiful as it looks, it's also kind of impractical for me right now. So we're gonna put this guy here. We're gonna put a low voltage wire connector here and here, and then we're going to connect those with wire and we should, if we right click on this, we should see this thing is now getting power. It doesn't say exactly how much power, but it is getting power. And that's the important thing. And then we can put a chest here and a chest here. Go into all smelting, configure sides, tell it to pull from the right side and push to the left. Okay. So then if I throw all of this in and we sort that all out. This thing should start smelting up all of the iron. Okay, that's awesome. This is doing a thing. It is smelting stuff for us. So that is a good start. However, this is not doubling any ores. So that is another thing that we want to do. And I'm thinking for that, we're just going to keep it real simple and we'll make a sag mill. Sag mill, also pretty easy to make. Just need a little bit of flint and some other things as well. I should have all the necessary components uh, in my base right over. I always do this. I can never find the front of my base. All, I should do, it's all right here. There we go. So let's see. Flint. One, two, three. Uh, iron I have. I need one, two, three, four. One, two, and one. Because we need to make another one of those guys. Still need some iron bars. I'm actually going to need pistons. So let's go like that and like that. There we go. Now we have ourselves a sag mill. And actually, while I'm on 
the subject I want. One more chest, and we'll toss that back in there. And we're going to change this up just a little bit. So, step one completed. Step two, uh, getting there. <laughs> all right, so let's take all this stuff back out. Break this, take this stuff out, and break that. All right. You go here. We'll break that. And now we're going to change this up one more time. We're going to put a chest, a chest, and a chest. And then the sag mill's going to go here. And the alloy smelter's going to go here. So the sag mill will still pull and push. Or the, uh, the alloy smelter will pull from this middle chest and push the final result to over here. The sag mill is going to pull from the left and push to the right as well. And then we're going to go one, two, and we'll hook both of those. Oh, wait, that's the wrong thing. We'll hook both of those up. I can't attach the wire there. What? Do I need malt? Oh, that's a little annoying. Okay, so looks like we're going to have to change this up a little bit. That's okay. Let's see what we have. I think we could probably use, like, just a, a basic capacitor bank. Some sort of battery, if that makes sense. Oh, I teleported. On accident. That was strange. Things, things are happening. Either way, let's make ourselves a basic capacitor bank. Should be completely doable. Uh, let's grab you, let's grab you, and grab you. Oh, and copper. There we go. So first things first, make some of those and then make me four basic capacitors. And then the basic capacitor, I am going to need a block of redstone. I do have all of that. There we go. And then there we go. Awesome. And then I do have enough connectors. Yeah, we should be good. We should be good. Okay. So now we go back, and we're going to... Whoa, 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 uh, what? What in the world? How did I... Um, game? <laughs> the game is trying to kill me, my friends. You saw it. You saw it right there. It's trying to kill me. I don't even know what just happened. I guess it's fine. Okay, so let's try putting the capacitor directly on. The thing? Um, it is getting power. It's kind of facing a direction that I didn't want it to, but it is getting power at 64 RF per tick. That actually does the job just fine. So then we'll go here, 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 here. Take our low voltage coils. And that will power all of those machines, right? So our sag mill will start getting power and our um, smelter will start getting power. So that'll totally work. Now, this uses 20 RF per tick. This uses 20 RF per tick. And this is the, the water wheel is producing 64 RF per tick. Right now, it's transferring more than that. This is going down because this thing isn't full yet. But once this is completely full, we will be at a net positive for power. I also just looked at my armor and I'm in need of some new armor here pretty quick, but we'll deal with that in a little bit. So now we can toss all this stuff back and let this all start smelting up. Sagmill's gonna, you know, basically turn this into gold powder. The gold powder will get smelted and turned into ingots, and it's basically going to double our ores for us, which is excellent. The other thing I want to check on is last episode we made this like fishing thing over here. And I want to see if this has done anything yet. Oh, yeah, look at that. We've caught all sorts of stuff. I only have four bait left, but still, we've caught tons of stuff here. And this is the thing I'm really actually excited for, is this Neptune's bounty. So we got ourselves a Neptunium sword, or a Neptunium shovel and a Neptunium hoe. Neptunium is a amazing item that is good for so many things. Um, but to start with... Let's load up, well, actually, what I should really do 
is get out my sleeping bag and sleep real quick before things get nasty. There we go. And then maybe what we should do is just, uh, let's just chop down a little bit of uh, that and maybe a little bit of this. And maybe, uh, whoa. Oh, these things, cinder blooms. Okay. Note to self, be careful around those. Chop down a couple of those. And maybe we take a little bit right here. Okay. And then we're going to put the important stuff away. And I suppose all this wood that I chopped down, I didn't actually pick up. Yeah, a little bit there, a little bit there. Okay, good, good, good. Grab out our portable crafting bench. And let's make a bunch of chests. So then, uh, right here, I guess. We'll just put down a couple of those and we can put a lot of our loot in there. We want to make sure we keep the good stuff, right? We don't want to take the good stuff with us, but a lot of this stuff is not good stuff. A lot of this stuff is just kind of junk stuff. Like, ooh, cobblestone, how exciting, right? Same over here. All this, we did get a short cast one book, whatever that is. Um, I'll just put all this stuff away. This, why is that glowing? It's a swift fish. Oh, so these are like fish that if you eat, they give you some sort of buff. Interesting. Either way, this is all stuff. And I think you can, yeah, you can convert most of these into raw fish fillets. And then the fish fillets you can cook. Oh, and uh, you can actually make them into all sorts of different stuff. Friend, fish and chips. You can cook them and just get cooked fish fillets. That's not a bad source of food. And a lot of these, if I remember correctly, it's been a little while since I've played around with aquaculture. But yeah, most of these can be converted into more than just one fish fillet, right? So you catch all these fish. And suddenly you've got quite a lot. And that's really the, the, the big thing that they're good for is just making fish fillets. Uh, some of the other stuff can be made into other things. But the majority, fish fillets, right? But it's a good source of food. And it's a source of food that really doesn't make me work too hard. I really just need to make sure that this thing is stocked up with bait. And as long as it's stocked up with bait, I'm basically set. Like, look at that. We got almost a stack of food. Uh, and did, all we had to do was set this thing up uh, from, you know, at the very beginning. So, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, there we go. So, I think this is a good uh, this is a good option as far as food goes. Uh, we do need to figure out a way to more efficiently get bait, though. Uh, and I think there's a couple ways we could do that. Um, what we could probably do... Well, you know what? I think that's something we should probably do in a later episode. Because that's going to take some time. There's going to be some uh, some automation stuff involved with that. Uh, in the meantime, though, we did get some good stuff going. Guys, I think this is a good place to wrap up today's episode. So I'm going to call this one right here. My friends, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Links in the description below. So check that out as well. Otherwise... Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.